Okay, now this is one, this is a pattern. It is a repeating uh, set of actions on a grid of elements, but it's not all that interesting, right? And also, in terms of how we're controlling it, it may not be giving us the kind of results that we were expecting. Like we want this pattern to be moving through the entire collection of points, not in every column. So what we're gonna do is right click this, um, the grid points object and say that we want to flatten it. This means that um, what was a data structure coming through this wire here, now is just a single list of points. And now with the single list of points, we can have our cull pattern from the list of Booleans determine across the entire collection how the pattern should repeat. So now, if we're changing the extents in the X or the extents in the Y, it's actually going to shift what the pattern is giving us as a result, right? If we have four, 14, um, a value of 14 in EY, that means that we're actually getting 15 points along this direction. Uh, sorry this direction and 25 along this. So any increment of three is going to actually be repeating in bands. But as we shift EX, right, and we go to a number that's not divisible by three, now we're getting a shift in the pattern. So this is a way for us to create patterns very quickly using a kind of automated routine from Grasshopper, which is the cull pattern. And, um, and just by changing the extents or going back and changing my boolean pattern if I say true false I'll get a different collection of points as a result okay so to finish this off let's go ahead and um, and do something additionally to this uh, resulting set of points and let's just draw a circle at each one of the points that's been uh, been kept. So if we go to curve analysis, uh, sorry, primitive circle, this asks for the base plane of the circle and the radius of the circle. All right, so the base plane, if we give it a point, it will assume an xy plane. Perfect. So we'll just connect our call pattern into P, and we can connect the grid size all the way from the beginning into R. Now, R is the radius value, but the grid size we specified as one, so our circles are gonna be overlapping. So let's zoom into our cir circle object and right click R, and we're gonna set an expression that is R over two. So this is gonna say, divide the input R by two so that we get half. Now our circles are not overlapping, and they're based on our original uh, set of grid, uh, grid points. Okay, so we're gonna take a second here and we're gonna make sure that we have everything labeled and then we're gonna go back over what's going on here with the flat. All right, so the last couple of objects that I didn't label yet, this here is our call pattern. So I'm gonna group that and call it the call pattern. And this here is our circle by base plane. Okay, so there are th kind of three important things that we need to uh, review in order to get your file working as we expect, okay? Two of them have to do with these little icons that are attached to the inputs of objects, and the other has to do with how this panel is understood. Okay, so um, the first thing is, let's go to the panel. Your panel should look just like this. It should say Booleans, and it should have a collection of true and falses on alternating white and light gray lines with a corresponding index value here on the left. If it doesn't, that means that we missed one step along the way. So there's two ways to, to make sure that we have it uh, set up correctly. The first is to double click and make sure that you have here multi-line unchecked. That means that each one of these will be understood as a single line. Hit OK. And yes, your uh, panel may actually be a uh, yellow color. That's just a setting that you can specify 
here um, under the right click options and I make mine white so that it's more easily visible to you guys on the other end of uh, the webinar. Okay, so um, you should have zero, one, two, however many Boolean values you have on alternating bands of color. Um, and you should see as, as a result coming out a double line, which means you have a list. Right? The other way you can check that the multi-line data has been unchecked is to right-click this object, and there's an option right here that says multi-line data. You need to make sure that it's not highlighted. Okay, so if you have that set up, right, and you make a modification to your X and Ys, right, the pattern's going to change. Or if you modify your collection of trues and falses, your pattern will also change. All right, so you can take a minute to experiment with these. All right, we get some interesting patterns as a result. Pretty good one. Okay, so that's the first thing that we've we've now uh, ensured that we have set correctly. The next two things have to do with these um, little icons that are attached to the inputs of our objects. When we make a grid, it gives us a data tree. And for some more in-depth um, understanding of data trees, we recommend you check out the. Uh, data trees webinar that we conducted uh, a few weeks ago. It's posted on our website as a collection of videos. Um, but the basics of data trees, which we won't have to use too much today, uh, but the basics are that here is to, it's giving us our points organized on lists that are uh, essentially corresponding to our columns of points. So here this is going to be one list, then another list, then another list. So if I don't have flatten checked, the pattern that I get is always going to be repeating true, false, true, true, false, true, false, true, true, false, true, false, true, true, false, true, always every column, right? To make this a little bit more dynamic, what we want is not for the grid points to be understood as lists that are columns, but as one collection of points, so that once I get here, the next point in the list is here. So my repeating pattern here coming from uh, my Boolean list, will wrap around to the next column and continue. So the way to do that is to right click the grid points object and check flatten. And again, what this does is it takes our data tree and removes all of the hierarchy inside of it, so we're left with just one list as a result. So all of our points are now in one list. Okay, and the last thing that we wanted to do is make sure that we set a local expression on the input of R. So here on our circle plane by base plane, the R input, we right clicked and said set uh, to give an expression. And we specified R over 2. If you hit OK, R is the label of the input here. And uh, divided by 2 is the expression we want to correspond with P. Okay, so um, we've done our flatten, we've set up our multi-line data for our list of Booleans, and we've um, specified an expression here. And there was one question the, about the, um, the panel here. So let's double click. You need to make sure that between each uh, set of Booleans, you actually hit enter or specify carriage return. That will make this understood as a Boolean object instead of a word, right? The word true is different from the Boolean true. All right, so you should have an enter in between each one of the lines of your Booleans. Okay, so um, let's take a second. Uh, we've completed our first file. Um, let's experiment with changing the extents in the X, the extents in the Y, and um, experimenting with a different Boolean pattern. And if you have any questions as you go, uh, we'll take just a couple minutes here, but if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them into the window and we'll address them as a group.
Okay. Okay, so um, there are a couple of questions about how exactly we have this file set up, and um, they're related to whether or not you use a panel here as an input or another type of input. And the, uh, mostly the answer to all the questions is yes. Um, they can, um, you can use different types of inputs to specify this. You could use a, a Boolean object from the params primitive tab. So here's a Boolean. And you could right click and say set multiple Booleans specifying them. I like to use the panel because you see, visit your, it's visible to you and me what is actually, actually in, that, um, in that panel. All right. Okay. Um, and there were a couple other questions about what else you might do with the, the pattern. And um, there are all kinds of uh, different scenarios that we can do. We're going to think about this just first as a collection of circles. And we're going to start talking about applications as we go into the next set of files. So if you have any, any other questions before we move on, make sure you drop them in the window. And Otherwise, we'll move on to the next exercise. All right. Seems like we're comfortable with our first um, set of patterns. Okay, so I'm going to hit save and close and um, we'll bounce back over to the PowerPoint. Okay, so we worked with list culling and arrived at a pattern that wasn't too dissimilar from this. <coughs> 